Good morning. And welcome to worship on this first Sunday of September, September 5th. It's very um, exciting to have you here with us in worship or watching us on Zoom. And uh, so we're happy that you're here with us. Um, it is the first Sunday of the month. We will be having communion today. Um, the communion elements will be in our little um, the disposable things. And uh, will be they are gluten-free still. We're still using those. Um, in fact, I ordered more. So um, yeah, yeah. So we'll have them ready for next month as well. Um, so it's very exciting to have you here. It is the first Sunday of the month, and uh, so as part of that, we celebrate all of our birthdays and anniversaries. So um, we'll bring up that slide, and uh, here are our September birthdays, including the one I forgot from um, and left off the uh, weekly email, which was Mike Gehrig, um, whose uh, birthday is September 12th. So um, we're very excited, and uh, so we will sing happy birthday to all of these people. Happy birthday to you. And there's the words for the song. <laughs> but that's okay. It's happy to have Lindsay with us um, and uh, celebrating her birthday this month. And uh, so it's happy to, and glad to have you with us in worship this morning. Um, and uh, the next slide will have our anniversaries on it. And uh, we just were, if you were on Facebook, at least you already knew that um, the 1st of September was uh, Jim and Carol's uh, anniversary. And uh, so happy anniversary to you guys. Um, and uh, Bill and Levina are here today as well, and um, as we celebrate their anniversary, and, and Russ and Martha are here to celebrate their anniversary, and um, so uh, we just need to get the hates back here, um, and uh, I've talked to them a few times, but, um, but they're staying away, still trying to stay safe from COVID and all of that, so um, uh, we want to celebrate, and we wish you all a happy anniversary month. Um, this month. So happy anniversary to all of you this month. Um, as always, as if you are, everybody here has been accounted for attendance wise, but if you are watching this at home on uh, Zoom or uh, on YouTube uh, later, you can use your QR code and uh, use that QR code and uh, let us know that you are watching it and uh, use our online attendance form. We really do appreciate you doing that. And I haven't had taken a time to mention that too many times. So um, those are our announcements this morning. Um, other than the fact that you do see two empty chairs, I feel like we've left like the, there used to be a, a Midwestern thing was to always leave an empty chair for a guest. You never knew when you might have a guest show up. And uh, so I don't know if we'll have a guest show up today, <laughs> but, um, but we are missing Joanna and Deb today. They both had uh, things to, that they uh, had other uh, conflicts this morning. So they're uh, out doing wonderful things um, this morning and won't be able to be here with worship with us. So we'll miss them. Um, but we'll, tr we'll, we'll, soldier on. we'll, we'll soldier on uh, this holiday weekend without them. So, but we welcome all of you here and uh, we say God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. We invite you all to stand as you are able or, and, or, and want to and uh, join together with us in our opening gathering song.
Please join with me in our call to worship. Everywhere we go, we are surrounded by windows. Help us, gracious God, to live with you in the future. Windows open views into the future. We look for possibilities as we journey together. With our eyes open and our hearts full, we step forward. We step into God's future on our grave. Please. 
Please join us in singing Are Ye Able. Please join with me in reading together our opening prayer. Awesome God, you blessed each element of creation with your love. You called us from slavery into witness and service. Be with us this day as we gather to worship. Clear our minds of all the distractions which would draw us away from you. Prepare us to be witnesses to your power and love. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Good morning. Right. Well, now, now you know who I am. I can leave it there. <laughs> These glasses have a magnet in them. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. is our final week as we have been going through the Faith Windows um, sermon series and talking about all the different windows of our church sanctuary. We have talked about the window of change, the window of purpose, the window of comfort, the window of image, the window of finance, the window of stewardship. And finally, we are today talking about the window of attitude. How many of you think, and you can raise your hand here, this is not a, a rhetorical question, how many of you think that the world will be better off in 50 years than it is today? Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, I thought so. Um, I asked you this question three years ago when I first got here, and, uh, and I told you at that time that when people were asked that question in the 50s, right after World War II, um, it was about 90% thought that um, the world would be better 50 years later than it was right then. And that in the 80s and 90s, and as time went on, that number has only gone down. And I can tell you that three years in this church and COVID and everything else, that number continues to go down because it was uh, less than half um, last time we took that survey and it was about a quarter of you this time who raised your hand and said that it would be that you thought it would be better in 50 years than it is today so that's what we are talking about today that idea of attitude what do we believe do we be really believe that God is at work in the world around us? And do we really believe that things might or will get better? Our window today, that our last window out of all of our windows, is the window of the walking on the water. Or as the window depicts it, the sinking in the water. The window depicts the, the end of the story as Jesus rescues Peter. But you, you all know that story, right? Where Jesus comes along while the, the, all the disciples are in the boat and they're, they're scared. It's waves are, are crashing against the boat. And, and here comes Jesus walking across the water. And Peter always being the, the brash, excited, uh, over-adventurous um, always willing to take a chance, says, Jesus, just say the word and I will come walking on the water with you. And Jesus says, 
all right, come on. And Peter takes a couple of steps out onto the water, and lo and behold, Peter can walk on the water too. Until, right, until he notices the waves beginning to get bigger, and he notices the wind blowing, and and he starts to look around, and he starts to realize, whoa, wait a minute, I am actually walking on the water. I shouldn't be able to do this. And then when he started to get, when fear started to enter into his heart, he began to sink. And he said, Jesus, save me. And there, that moment is caught in that window. That story is connected with our scripture this morning. Our scripture this morning is a, a completely different story. It's a story about a centurion, uh, you know, a Roman, who comes to Jesus and says, please come and heal. And and, and Jesus says, okay, I'll, I'll, okay, maybe I'll come. And, and the centurion says, wait a minute, you don't need to come. You don't need to walk all the way to my house. Bless you. You don't need to walk all the way to my house because I know how powerful you are. And I know as a centurion that that this were how this works because i tell my my soldiers what to do and they tell others what to do and that my command goes down and it is followed and i don't actually have to be there for the work to be done And Jesus is astounded by this, by this idea that this centurion, not one of his disciples, not Peter, not one of the you know, rabbis, not one of the teachers, not one of the Sadducees or the, the lawyers, not one of the high officials, but a Roman who gets that it is not just Jesus. It is what Jesus is pointing to. It is God who is doing this healing. And that Jesus himself doesn't have to be there. And much like our story that we began with, our story of Jesus and the children, where the disciples were saying, you know, get these kids out of here. We don't need kids around here. They're just noisy, and they get in the way, and, you know, and much like that. Where, and Jesus said, no, no, wait a minute. You, these, the kids need to be here. You need to learn from them. You need to be more like these. You need to have faith more like these children. Now he is turning to his disciples and and the other leaders and the other people of, of, of Israel and saying, you need to be more like the centurion. You need to have faith like the centurion does. You need to believe beyond just what you can see. You need to believe beyond what you can just see and touch. Do you see that? You need to believe beyond what you can just see and touch and experience in the moment. And that was Peter's problem too. Peter believed in, believed in the moment that he could, could, that could walk on water but then when that moment changed, when the moment became he was standing out in the water, not in the safety of the boat, and he felt the water and the waves and he felt the wind. When that moment changed, then his faith left him. 
because his faith was about being what was happening to him in the moment. It didn't have a deeper grounding to it. And when what was happening to him in the moment changed, his faith left him and he began to sink. Our faith has to be deeper than just what is happening to us in the moment. And our society is working in exactly the opposite direction. As much as, and I, I hate to criticize social media too much because everybody criticizes social media. It's super easy to stand up here and criticize social media. But doesn't, isn't that exactly what social media does? It's, it's all about in the moment, right? I take a picture of what I'm eating and I post it and on Facebook and here's what I'm eating in the moment. And then I, I get upset about how the Padres are playing, which I don't get upset about anymore, but I have lots of friends who do. And uh, I've, I've gotten above that all. And uh, above all that, I mean. And uh, so, but... Um, but they post, you know, how upset they are, you know, about how the Padres are doing. And uh, it's all in the moment, right? Our lives are becoming more and more about in the moment. And the more they become about in the moment, the less they become grounded in something deeper. So while I, I love Facebook and I love social media and I love the way it connects us when we can't be together, we have to be cautious that it doesn't suck us into this in-the-moment kind of attitude and that it doesn't you know, upheave us from our roots and our foundation to where we just become like a boat with no rudder and no anchor, just floating and being pushed around by the wind and the waves from one crisis to another, from one event to another. Because when that happens, we become the pawns of others. We become the pawns of others who learn how to manipulate the situations that we find ourselves in. And so we get all ramped up about whatever current situation is going on for a day or two or a week. And then the next week we get all excited and all mad or all happy about the next big thing that everybody's all upset and are happy about. And then the next week it's something else. You see what I'm saying? It just goes on and on and on from crisis to crisis, from moment to moment, and we lose our anchor. And so for us to even talk about, you know, what do we think the world is going to be like in 50 years? We don't even know what the world's going to be like in 50 minutes or 50 days. We don't, I couldn't tell you what the COVID experience is going to be like in 50 days. That's two months from now. And none of us know, right? Is, it, is the Delta variant going to, it, it sounds like it's plateauing, like, it, like all the other ones have, you know? Are we in the coming, are we, are we going back up? Is, is Labor Day weekend going to, is, are we going to go into Thanksgiving? Is, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, right? We get tossed about in the wind and the waves. And if we have no anchor, if we have no rudder, if we have nothing that guides us, that, that holds us, that, anchor, that, that ties us together and with God, then we just get pushed around from issue to issue, from crisis to crisis. We need that anchor in Christ. 
and in God. And I hope that we come here every Sunday morning or we watch this worship service from home in hopes of that helping to build that anchor. And I hope that we take the lessons that we learn each week and we try to apply them to our lives so that that becomes an anchor, becomes a rudder that helps to guide us. But we have to believe that it's real and we have to believe that it is going to work and make a difference in our lives. If we don't, well, it'll only be a half-hearted effort. If we don't, then worship will only be something we do occasionally or we do and then go back exactly where we left off th two hours earlier and like it never happened. We have to have an attitude we have that, that, that says we believe that this is really happening and that it's really going to make a difference in who we are. We have to be open to change. We have to be open to change as God calls us into new ideas and new opportunities to serve him. And we have to be willing to see that. We have to be willing to, to see that those opportunities and believe that those opportunities are really there and are going to be there. There's a, a silly movie, uh, one of the Santa Claus movies or something, but um, there, you know, you know the Santa Claus movies where they, what's his name? And I, yeah, my brain doesn't work that way, so it doesn't connect to Tim Allen. I was gonna say Tim, and I was like, oh, Tim something. And uh, too many Tims. And uh, anyway, um, where uh, the, the head elf says to him, you know, believing isn't, or seeing isn't believing. He says, believing is seeing. And that has become, I don't know, but that has become a new, uh, a new thing in our culture um, today. It's not new, but it's the latest fad. It's called visualization. Have you heard of that? Have, has that term crossed your path? Visualization means, uh, as it's talked about today, is that you visualize what you want and then it will become true. It will happen. Which is sort of true, sort of not true. Um, because I can tell you that if you are not in the right situation, if you are in the midst of systemic things that will stop you from getting something, no matter how much you visualize it, it is not going to happen. However, if you don't visualize what you want, it will never happen, <laughs> right? Simply visualizing what you want is one, what you want may not be what you need. So that's the first thing to remember. So I can visualize winning the lottery. That is not going to get me the, to win the lottery. It may get me broke by visualizing it and then playing the lottery with all my money. That would not be good. But you see what I mean? So simply visualizing something is not going to make it happen, nor should it, because winning the lottery is not, should not be my goal, nor yours. However, if I want to become closer to God and in a closer relationship with God, if I want to do this first thing on my list, which is to be open to God's change and, and to God's call in my heart, I need to visualize that. I need to see that that's a real possibility Because if I'm not even open to that possibility, if I'm not visualizing that, if I'm not thinking that that is something that could really happen, then it probably won't. Then I will probably miss every opportunity that God puts in front of me for that to happen. And isn't that kind of what happened to Peter, right? Peter was visualizing on Jesus, he was, when he was in the boat, he, all he was focused on was Jesus walking on the water. 
And while he was visualized on Jesus walking on the water, he was able to step out and walk on the water. The problem was that once he got out in the water, he stopped visualizing and focusing on Jesus, and he started focusing on the, wa- on the waves and on the wind. He lost his focus. Fear crept into him, and he began to sink. We have to keep our focus, and our attitude has to tell us that that's the right thing to do, is to keep our focus on God, to be open to God's call in our hearts, to know that our purpose is to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. and to help others to do the same. To step out of our comfort zones. We have to visualize the idea that that God is calling us to step out of our comfort zones and to share our story of faith with others. I know we think our stories are boring. But they're not really. Your story isn't really as boring as you think it is. Your story may be just exactly the story that someone else needs to hear. We need to believe that. We need to change our image so that people can see Jesus at work in us. We need to change how we present ourselves to the world so we're not so much worried about how we are seen, but rather how is Jesus seen through us. That's a change in attitude and focus. We need to make sure that our our priorities and our finances are aligned with God's purpose. See how all these are connected back to our different windows. And we need to recognize that the gifts that we have been given we need to recognize the gifts that we have been given and then share those gifts with others and we need to believe that that is what God is calling us to do We need to believe and have that attitude of focus on God and an attitude that says, hey, things will get better. God is working through us and our church and is in our community already. God is at work in the hearts of the people that we are trying to reach. God is not simply standing behind us, pushing us into the darkness. But God is the light in the middle of the darkness, calling us to join him there. To be a reflection of his light in the midst of the darkness so that others may see so that others may experience God and God may experience God's love as much as we have that others may grow and experience God's love the way that we have that others may become disciples of Jesus Christ as we have 
We see these stories in the windows around us. And these stories need to be shared. I can tell you the world doesn't know these stories. Especially today. Especially today. The world doesn't know these stories. Sometimes we think, oh, they already know. You know, we know it, right? You guys have all been in church your whole lives, or most of it, and you all know these stories inside and out. Surely everybody else does, but I can tell you that probably close to 90% of the people in the United States do not know these stories that are represented on the windows of our church. All they know about our faith is what they hear in bits and pieces on the news, perhaps, or in a Facebook meme. They need to hear these stories. They need to hear your stories. They need to know that there is a God who loves and cares for them no matter who they are, no matter where they've been or what they've done. And they need to know that there are a people who share God's love in radical ways and in real and practical ways. And we need to be the people who do that. We need to be the disciples who share that love. And it all begins with attitude. We have to believe that it is real. We have to believe that it is important. We have to believe that it is our calling. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Please stand as you are able and uh, join us in singing My Faith Looks Up to Thee. <coughs> We've come now to our time of sharing our celebrations and concerns. And um, we begin, of course, 
um, with the survivors and um, those who are mourning loss in the wake of Hurricane Ida um, in Louisiana, Mississippi, um, and of course up the East Coast, um, including um, tornadoes in Virginia and flooding in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and New York and Connecticut and New England. Um, it, was, it was tragic all the way up the coast. Um, and uh, so uh, just so many people um, whose lives have been turned upside down yet again uh, by another devastating hurricane. And uh, so for all of those people, for those who came or are coming in from uh, around the country to help, uh, who are restoring power and uh, who are bringing supplies, um, and for, so for everyone who is a victim in the midst of it and those who are coming and trying to bring help, uh, for all of that we say, Lord, in your mercy. Of course, we continue to lift up uh, the situation in Afghanistan um, for um, just for the tragic loss that we that we continue to hear about, um, and for the safety of uh, Americans and uh, others who are in the country uh, still. So for for all of that situation, we just say, Lord, in your mercy. Um, Holly, I've uh, sent a prayer request in and requested uh, prayers for Jim. Uh, he will be having a CT scan uh, today. Uh, on his bladder, and then he starts his six weeks of chemo on Tuesday. Um, so we pray that the CT scan is clear and that uh, this six-week uh, session goes as easy or better than the last time. And uh, so he did really well during the last six-week session. So, um, so we um, pray that this session goes that well as well. So for Jim um, and for Holly, who has to take care of him, uh, we say, Lord, in your mercy, um, for Adelaide and Bernie, um, we lift up a joy that their granddaughter Nancy got married yesterday. Yeah, so we wish Nancy and her husband Tony um, uh, years of happiness. So uh, congratulations uh, for you guys. So for that whole family, we say in times of joy. Um, and we another joy is that Larry um, Smith is back with us. And uh, he just uh, arrived back in uh, California um, this week. And uh, so we're very happy uh, that you arrived back safely. We were praying for your travel. And so, yeah, very good to have you back with us. So uh, a joy that Larry is back with us as well. We say, in times of joy. Yeah. You've uh, heard about um, the, I'm sure you heard, if you have a kid especially, you heard about all of the, the, or grandchildren, uh, all the conflicts in the Ramona School District about masks. Maybe you heard just a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we had the exact same thing happen in our preschool. Um, so um, for the first time, I, we mentioned this last week and the week before, but the, for the first time uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, they finally had a kid uh, who came, had a positive result, had nothing to do with our preschool. I mean, he didn't get it from our preschool. Uh, but he was a child who was attending our preschool and then got COVID um, from another event. And uh, so the preschool had to sort of do a lockdown. They had to do, they had to institute a stricter mask mandate. Um, and they also closed um, Friday early and uh, in order to do a deep cleaning uh, on the preschool itself. And um, all those things caused way more conflict um, Parents have pulled some. A few parents have pulled their kids out of the preschool. Um, so, so we, she has both sides, right? She has parents who are praising her for, for uh, acting swiftly and taking these. And then she has parents who are just like the school board has, parents on both sides. So, uh, I just want to lift up our the preschool staff and Angie who are in the midst of this, um, politicalness of our, of this pandemic and who are having to deal with all of that and all the parents who are. Um, upset and taking it out on them uh, in the midst of all of this and on the preschool itself as they are trying to to thread the needle and and uh, follow all the guidance and uh, the rules and, and all of that so um, it is it's tricky it's a tricky thing to do with a, a preschool is not the same as a school they don't have the same rules and they don't follow have the same um, guiding uh, organization so they have whole different organization, a whole different guiding thing, and, and so it's, it's much more complicated. So, 
so just lift up, lift them up for patience and um, um, for uh, strength in this time as they as they deal with this situation. So uh, for our preschool, for the teachers, for the director, Angie, and for the parents, we say, Lord, in your mercy. So we lift up these joys and concerns as we join together in prayer. Alleluia. Gracious and loving God, we ask that your love flow over our country with those who are still battling fires in our state and throughout the West, with those who are in the midst of cleanup and re restoring of services along the East Coast, with so much tragic loss and destruction. We just pray for all who have been affected, all who are mourning loss, all who are suffering from, tra from trauma. Be present with them that they may feel your warmth, your comfort, and your care. Be present with all of those whom we've lifted up on our in our concerns this morning. Be present with all of those who are in the midst of treatments and in the midst of care in the hospital and in outpatient care. Be present with those who are feeling alone and isolated as this Delta variant continues to wreak havoc on our county and our state and our country and the world. Be present with us. Guide us and strengthen us that we may find ways to reach out to those who feel lost, alone, and abandoned. that we may find ways to be a reflection of your light. Help us to believe where we do not see. Help us to believe so that we may see, that we may see you already at work in the world around us, and so we may join in that work. Help us to believe so that we will give you our whole effort, our whole mind and body and soul. Give us strength to walk beside you, that we may walk humbly with you each and every day, that we may grow closer to you, that we may be your disciples, not just in name, but in all that we do. And may we truly come to believe that you are here and that together we can bring about the kingdom of God, that we truly can make this place a better place that we truly can make a difference in the world around us. 
that we truly can transform the world. Help us to remember that this is our calling. Help us to remember that you are already there in the world working, calling us to you. Help us to remember that you are the God of all people and of all creation. Help us to remember this as we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> One of the places I have to believe is that we will be financially via <laughs> viable, right? And uh, so, and I do, and I believe that, and I believe that we together will keep this church going, even as we um, are, of course, going through this time of COVID. And we have continued to do that, and we have continued to be the church, the people of God. And I believe that we are going to continue to do that and to be a presence here in this city. I believe that we are called to do that. And we celebrate that each and every week by singing together this hymn of praise, our doxology. I invite you all to stand as we sing this song together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Please join with me in our offering prayer. God of light and beauty, every gift is from you. Even our ability to give is a blessing of your love. We offer you what we have and what we are. Use our gifts to give birth to a world of righteousness where none are in need and where all draw close to your grace. Amen. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Please stand as you are able.
Go forth now with God's light shining on the path before you. With Jesus beside you is a guide and friend and the power of the Holy Spirit working within you to give you strength and courage and hope to go forth each and every day. Amen.